Welcome to today's episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays. Usually we change shirts and pretend it's a different day, but today we've only got these shirts, so the illusion is destroyed. Well, not really. You always wear the same shirt. Black shirt, sun bleached, black baseball hat. My wardrobe is actually like The Simpsons. It's just you open it and it's just black t-shirts. In today's episode, we're covering saddle sores and the five most common reasons you get them. Why have you got Chris's pelvis on your head? It's not Chris's pelvis. This is Barry's pelvis. That's Chris. Chris's pelvis is over there. You get saddle sores because of an asymmetric interaction with the bike. This is why they always occur on one side and when, when you get them they usually occur in exactly the same place. If you consider that all saddles are intended to be sat on in a symmetrical fashion, when that doesn't happen, all hell breaks loose. And it's important to understand that there are certain saddles that might promote saddle sores and there are others that won't. On the grounds that uh, there are some saddles that are more forgiving of a poor bike position, for example Physique Arion where you can sit in it in a, multiple, uh, a multitude of different places, versus something like this which you can really only interact with properly. Quite a lot of people will fit something like this to their bike in the, in the name of getting rid of saddle sores and it will rip them to shreds. The single takeaway from this video is that saddle sores have got nothing to do with saddles. They've got everything to do with bad positions and how you're interacting with them. The single most common driver for saddle sores is excessive saddle height. It's extremely uncommon for a human being to sit centrally and overextend both of their legs. Most people are one side dominant and we're right side dominant. Uh, so as a result, most people when the saddles run too high, I would say 80 to 90% of people sit off to the right hand side. This results in an asymmetric interaction with the saddle. So what we do is we sacrifice our, right, our left leg for our right leg. So what you'll probably find is that most people watching this video will probably experience saddle sores on the left hand side because it results in an over engagement with the left side of the saddle. And that's usually where you get uh, this, uh, this, the, the, these abrasions and these, these, these sores. So one potential remedy for doing this might be to lower the saddle height to enable you to sit more centrally. It's worth noting in some cases that if the saddle height is insufficient, a rider with impinged hips will also sit off to one side. So ultimately, saddle height is a major driver for saddle sores. The second, the next most common driver is excessive reach. I'm gonna have to get off this. Most people uh, will gravitate towards the nose of the saddle because the reach is too long and they will sit right on the nose as a means of reducing the reach. Uh, I'm getting off now because this is really painful. I don't know how to do it. It's worth noting that people carry out this compensation with excessive saddle height as well. Most people will gravitate to the front of the saddle as a means of reducing the reach to the handlebars and reducing the reach to the pedals. Again, if you're sat on the nose of the saddle, it's uh, far less supportive, and as a result, it's gonna promote an asymmetric interaction because you're just gonna simply fall off to one side of it. Most people, when, when presented or, or when sat on something as narrow as the nose of this Arione, they're never gonna sit centrally, they're gonna sit off to one side. Another major driver for potential saddle sores is stance. So that can be insufficient or excessive. The most common being insufficient stance. So what I find myself doing uh, very regularly, and this is really a testament to how bicycles are designed and over the last few decades, they've become increasingly narrower, mostly to enable uh, 60 kilo, 20 year old athletes to pedal through corners. Bikes have all been getting narrower. What that means is when you put a 40, 50, 60 something individual who's carrying a few extra pounds, normal human being, uh, they actually need the stance to be increased. So my single best selling pedal is a, a long axle Shimano SPD SLE. Uh, there's, a, there's a four millimeter difference between the two. And what that does is it, when you, when you don't have sufficient stance, it again tends to promote an asymmetric interaction with the saddle. You can alter your stance in a number of different ways. You can do it with a pedal. This is a more expensive way, to go, way of going about it. You can also do it at the cleats. We did a video on how to set up your cleats. It's here, there. And uh, you can also do it with the use of washers. We found using pressure mapping in the saddle that we can reduce pressure going through the saddle by up to 50% just by administering our sport. It, it tends to improve uh, stability and control of the foot and as a result, 
that transfers up through the knees, the hips, and the pelvis and yields a much more stable pelvis. You can also uh, correct an asymmetric interaction. It doesn't have to be a G8, but as long as it fits you and has sufficient support, then, then that, again, can help promote uh, a, a, good, a good symmetric interaction with your saddle. Finally, shoe setup. If you have ill-fitting shoes that destabilize your foot, if you have your cleat too far forward, which destabilizes your foot, if you have a particular brand of shoes where the cleat location can't be brought far back enough, it will destabilize the foot, and that in turn will potentially cause you saddle sores. So uh, one of the first remedies to potentially uh, remove saddle sores from the equation might be to take the cleat further back, which tends to yield a lot more stability in the foot, thus better stability through the knees, the hips, and the pelvis, and can yield a more symmetric interaction with the saddle. That's five very good reasons, but you didn't cover chamois cream, bib shorts, anything like that. Why? Because I don't think they've got anything to do with it. So consider this. Why is it that I get customers coming through here and they try multiple chamois creams, multiple saddles, multiple shorts, and this is the reason why these aspects aren't in this video, yet they're still having saddle sores. All you're doing by applying chamois cream is improving a lubricant, applying a lubricant to the skin, you're not treating the root cause of the problem. Yes, okay, they might help in, in relieving the symptoms, but you're not solving the problem with chamois cream. Same with shorts. Okay, yes, you could argue that if, um, if you've got a short that's ill-fitting, if it's two sizes too large and the chamois moves around, yeah, I don't see any reason why it couldn't cause salad soils. What I'm saying is that these are the major drivers, so you need to, you need to get the nuts and bolts of your position dialed, not, uh, dialed in first before you start worrying about chamois cream and buying a bazillion and one shorts or salads. The, the, these problems are typical of bad positions rather than bad equipment. So that marks the end of today's episode of Bike Fit Tuesday. If you have any questions related to this or any Bike Fit questions for James, put them in the comment section down below and I'm sure he'll do his best to answer them. If you'd like to book a fit with James, link down below to the bicycle website where you can book in with him because he's a bike fitter. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys soon.